and welcome to today's edition of Boobs by Plastic Surgery Show. I would like to thank everybody for your support. Um, I get a lot of um, answers, a lot of questions, a lot of support from my friends, from you, the viewers. So thank you very much for that. So for sure, we will go on for this show until this situation is over for sure. So uh, what are we talking about today? Today, we are talking about, of course, breast augmentation. And to be more specific, we are um, talking about planning breast augmentation. So I counted the number of factors we must consider, technical factors, before we do a breast augmentation, um, nine of them. So if I go quickly through them, you will understand what we are talking about. So they are, first, what type of procedure we need to do? Second, what size of implants do we need? Third, what is the width of the implant that should be, uh, should be used? Then number four, what sh shape of implant should we use? Number five, select the material of the implant. Number six, select the incision location. So where do we cut to do the procedure? Number seven, the position of the implant. So above muscle or below muscle. Number eight is, well, I forgot about number eight. And number nine is uh, what other procedures should be done in, together with this uh, breast augmentation procedure. Um, so let's go one by one and see uh, practically what uh, the, how the, the, the breast augmentation planning looks like. So first we said um, we must, I mean, of course, um, know what type of procedure we are doing. Uh, a woman with a wish to correct her breast might not be just a candidate to do uh, breast augmentation. She might need something else like um, breast lift, even breast reduction. Um, some girls who have um, 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 dropped breast, they think that they should do also the lift. Maybe they don't. And others think that they should only do breast augmentation, but they should also do the breast lift. So that is the first thing to consider. So now we are focusing on breast augmentation. Breast lift is a story for some other time, some for, <clears throat> for another story, for another show. So the next is the size. Well, the size is always the most important thing, of course, because it's the, the thing that is most uh, visible to the outside. Um, about the size is always... Um, the factors to, to select the size are usually the wish of the patient, of course, and on the other side, the technical possibilities, uh, what can be done regarding her body. Um, so the first question is always, how big do you want to go? And you know, the most common question, is I want to be I want to be a little bit bigger but still um, meant, um, remain natural, of course, very logical. You know, nobody wants to be huge, enormous, like two balloons or something. I mean, that's very logical. But you know, we must understand that the most natural result you can get is the one you have now, before surgery. Um, any type of implant we use will make the 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 breast um, in a way fake. Even small implants make fake boobs. That's the fact. Now, there's only the question, how fake do you want to go? So in, in, in um, reality, you know, smaller um, implants um, make more natural results. So about size is, so that's, that's the, the main thing to, to know. I mean, to, the main information we need from the patient. Then, you know, um, there might be, you know, a discrepancy between the shape of the body and the size they want. Like um, a very tall girl, you know, maybe needs or wants very big breast, but she's very skinny, very slim, where her chest is very, very narrow. In that case, you know, we might not be able to do what <clears throat> she wishes because, you know, we are limited with the width of her breast, of her chest. We'll talk about it a little bit later. On the other hand, you know, some girl maybe want to stay um, natural, small, you know, but we know that if we make small implants, if we keep it too small, it will, it will not look good because it will remain empty. 
and there will be extra or excess of skin. So we might suggest doing a little bit more for this girl. Um, and how do we determine the size or select the size? Well, I mean, there are in way two different um, options, two different ways to do. Um, the classical way, which I prefer, is uh, very simple. We use a, a simple bra, like this one. Uh, we put it on. I will not put it on myself right now, <laughs> later. Um, so we put it on and then we use sizers to try the, the size that would um, fit well on the body. So sizers look like this. This is a sizer. It's not a real implant, it's a sizer. And it really, really fits well with the body, with the, ch uh, with the chest. And it makes uh, an effect of a final, impl of, of, the, of a real implant put inside the body. So this is like 250 milliliters. This is uh, 350 milliliters. So we are <coughs> with, with the bra, we are inserting different sizes of, um, of these sizers and we see what kind of size fits well um, to the body. That is uh, how we determine the size the classical way. The new way is using a 3D system where we make a 3D photo of a body and then we do like a robot or a um, computer simulation of the, of the, of the, of the, of the result. Um, I did use it quite, quite often a few years ago, then I stopped because it's very, very difficult to um, actually um, select or feel the, the, the result um, looking at, at the screen. You know, it's, it's much, much, much uh, better to see it on yourself, to put, put on a T-shirt, look at the mirror, um, turn around, rotate and see what effect an implant does. So I went back to the classical way using a bra and using um, sizers. These sizers come in different uh, shapes, or not shapes, but sizes, of course. But you know what we, uh, what they are very useful for is also to determine some asymmetries. Uh, we have some sizers that are like, they are very small, like 50 milliliters, 75 milliliters. So if there is an asymmetry, we can use those to determine what asymmetry there is, how many milliliters, so we can um, select the right implants during the procedure to correct those asymmetries, of course. Then once we have determined or decided what uh, size uh, woman a girl wants, we are at step number three, to determine uh, we, uh, which width of the implant we should use, width. So, of course, women can come in different shapes and sizes. Their, their um, rib cages are, can be uh, bright, uh, I mean, wider or narrower, and that is one of very important factors how to select the implant. Because, you know, <clears throat> if looking at the table of implants, this is like, you can see, but I mean, there's more, there's much more, and, you know, very, there's a lot of different uh, types and uh, shapes of implants. We uh, select the shape that corresponds best to the body. And the first, the most important factor is the width. You know, we don't want to go too narrow because if we use an, an implant which is too narrow, like I will show you two here, I have some implants, I can show you later. So if, if we use two implants that are too narrow, these are way too small for my <coughs> big chest, uh, you know, they will be too wide apart, you know. And here, what happens, we have a highway, you know, an empty space, which uh, is not really aesthetic. So. Uh, on the other hand, if we use an implant which is too wide, which is like goes over, you know, we, okay, we get a nice effect here in the middle, but it, it goes way too far away into the, into the um, armpit. And again, it does not make a nice effect. So the implant should be, should be the correct width according to the breast. Um, and such will make a nice cleavage, a nice effect here in the middle. And also, you know, it will not stick out of the body laterally. Once we have the width, usually the width is about 12 centimeters. You know, we use the calipers like this one to measure. So from here to here, but okay. It's about, usually about 12, 
well, let's say between 11 and a half and 12 and a half centimeters for most women. Then once we have the width, we can go uh, with the shape. So the shape of implant, we have in general two shapes of implants, as everybody knows. Um, round implants, which are round, and uh, anatomic implants, which are also round from this way. The difference, in, difference is in the, in, the, in the shape, in the projection. So the round implants are, if you look at them from the side, they are symmetrical, you know? The anatomic implants are not symmetrical. They, are, they have a peak on the lower part and flatter upper area. So, of course, the, the solution is simple. You know, this looks much more, more natural. Everybody knows anatomic is better, so we use this. Wrong. Um, we used to use a lot of this, but nowadays I use mostly round. Why? Because, you know, in reality, the difference between anatomic and round implant, once inside the body is very, very little, small. Um, and it's quite difficult sometimes to tell what kind of implant there is. And on the other hand, um, there are less complications with round implants. Um, I mean, the, nowadays, all, all the girls or everybody that comes for, for a consultation nowadays does some sort of uh, sport, uh, um, weight sport, like bodybuilding or I don't know, um, um, crossfit or different types of sports with weights. And there is a risk for an anatomic implant to rotate. So if an anatomic implant, which should be positioned like this, so flat up and round down, rotates, what happens? Of course, the breast gets deformed. If an, a round implant like this one rotates, nothing happens. It stays the same beautiful result. Um, so, but you know, everybody will say, yeah, but you know, the round implants look like balloons, they, they look round, they have too much effect in the upper area. That's also not true. Um, nowadays, we do like 95% of all our breast augmentation submuscular, which we'll talk a little bit later. But you know, the muscle squeezes the implant in the upper area like this. And what happens? Well, it, makes, it, it creates a shape which is very, very simple to this shape. Look. So round implants do not do round results, they do nice results. And of course, they do a little bit more effect in the upper area, like in the cleavage, but girls like that, you know, everybody, I mean, most of the girls that come to me say, yeah, yeah, do, do it round, I want a little bit fuller upper area. Um, and of course, the only way to do it is round, you know. Um, I really don't like the, the, the effect of anatomic implants where this, there's this flatness of this of the cleavage because i mean if you don't if you're nude or uh if you if, if you're uh, without the brow it's it's it can be flat i mean it's not that big difference but it's it tends to be flatter than the round implants so now that we decided which type of implant in the oh so yeah we not we cannot decide it yet there are of course cases where anatomic implants are better than this one it is the very skinny girls um, you know, usually when we do breast augmentation, we want to add volume. And the round implant will add volume just fine. It will add volume and the shape will more or less stay the same. But there are cases with girls that are really, really skinny, that have zero, zero tissue. In those cases, I prefer to use anatomic implants because we need to shape the breast to make, we have to actually make a breast. Like in the cases of reconstruction, when the, the, the breast is uh, removed after uh, like uh, carcinoma, after cancer. And these types of uh, implants are most com more commonly used to make a new shape of breast, not just to make it bigger, you know, because they, there is no breast actually to make it bigger. We have to new, make a new one, uh, completely new, I mean, new form, new, new, new shape of the breast. Um, so now we selected the form of the of the implant that we are going to use now we have to select the implant so let's say we are using round implants and there is the the, the width of 12 centimeters yeah so if we take the look at our nice chart 
uh, we can and we said, we said okay, uh, we tried with our implants and we want um, 300 milliliters. Okay, so let's see our chart, what kind of implant we use. Uh, if we say 300 milliliters, 12, difference, uh, 12 uh, centimeters of weight, uh, width, we get a moderate plus profile implant. Okay, I have um, one of the implant companies here. There are many others, but I will use this because I usually use this uh, product. So uh, the, the width is 12 centimeters. The volume we want is 300 milliliters. So we need this implant, which is 300 cc um, of volume, 12 centimeters of width. Um, and so we, we selected the implant. Um, why? Uh, but, but also round implants are not all the same. This is a moderate profile round implant. We also use um, we also use uh, high profile round implants, which is you can see um, the same width but with more projection. Yeah. So if for the same width of the um, rib cage, we would want a bigger effect, so to have bigger breast then we would select another type of round implant. So if, if, if I used, I would use in the first case, a moderate profile implant, to make it bigger, I would use high profile implant. So we do not uh, select the shape of the implant according to the size, but according to the width of the, of the chest. Okay, I'm getting very technical now. Uh, let's go on. Not to not to go too deep into the details. So once we have selected the sh the, the type of implant or the shape of the implant, we go on to select the um, material of the implant. Um, five years ago, ten years ago, we only used actually one material, and that is silicon um, textured cohesive gel. What what does that mean? Well, the inside of the implant can be um, of, made of three different materials. One is uh, water, uh, sal saline water. The second is uh, normal uh, silicon, liquid silicon. And the third is cohes cohesive gel. The water-filled implants are not being used at our, uh, in our country or in, in this part of the world since 15 years ago or 20 years ago. So, that's gone. Then the second, uh, liquid silicon also has been used maybe um, up until 10 years ago. And after in the last 10 years, there's only cohesive gel. So that's one less uh, factor that we have to think about. But what about the outside? This, the implants I'm holding here, this is, uh, these are um, textured. As you can see, they're not smooth. They're, they, they're, their surface is is like soft and rubbery, yeah? They're not smooth. Um, the other type of implants, like this one, you can see this is smooth implant. So a different surface. Why different surfaces? In the beginning, uh, we, like maybe 20 years ago or more, we used more or less smooth surfaces. But then some studies showed that textured implants, uh, te implant, textured surfaces, um, prevent some of the complications, which we will talk in an, another show. So then we started to use only textured implants. But in the last maybe two years, there have been some complications associated with textured implants. And now there is again trend a little bit more towards the smooth implants. Uh, you probably heard about this fiasco with the uh, ALCL, a special type of carcinoma associated with uh, some types of breast, some types of uh, implants. Um, that's the reason. They, uh, these uh, later studies have shown that it's not associated with all of the companies, all of the, the types. So, more I'm still more or less using only textured implants because the probability of having such complication is extremely low. We will talk that in another show. There's plenty more to talk about. So, textured implants, cohesive gel, uh, so form of implants, uh, size of implant. Where do we go next? Well, we have to decide where to start the surgery, where to incise, where to cut the skin. Uh, mostly, we use two approaches. So, one would be below 
below the, 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 the breast inside the inframammary fold. And the, the other would be around the nipple, like semicircular. Uh, both are fine. Usually we use the one below because it's a little bit quicker and simpler, but also around the nipple is a good option and some surgeons prefer that. And so it's probably more or less up to the surgeon to decide which incision he would prefer in your case. And then the, 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 the one of the last uh, factors that we have to decide is where to put the implant. You know, there are, as you know, two options. One is below the muscle, one is above the muscle. The muscle the, is the pectoral muscle, you know that, this one. So the muscle is like this. It's fan-shaped and goes, comes from, from the shoulder down in this way. And the implants can be placed above it. So it's between the skin, the skin and the muscle. Or there is the other option, uh, which, which is to put the, the, the implant below the muscle. So like this. In this case, we have to um, cut a little bit the, the, the muscle in this lower area. So we lift it like this. So there is space to put the implant in. Uh, the, the, the implant is never completely covered with muscle. Uh, it's uh, it, it is a technique. Uh, uh, there is also a technique completely under muscle, but it's almost never used in breast augmentation. So um, we use submuscular would mean dual plane in some countries. We use I use the term subpectoral or submuscular, and that is the same as dual plane uh, as it's used um, in Italy. Yeah. So uh, submuscular or subpectoral then would, would look like this. So the lower one third of the implant is under the skin and the upper two thirds of the, of the implant is under the muscle. And why, what is better? Well, um, in my opinion, submuscular is much, much better in almost every case. So I do like 95 or 99% of submuscular. Um, in years ago, uh, there was more talk, more debate about this: what is better, above muscle, below muscle? But uh, um, because there is, of course, uh, positives and negatives of each of these two um, approaches. In general, the pluses of subglandular are much shorter recovery time, so it's there. I mean, the, the, the pain is minimal, and you can return to work in a week. There is no problem with uh, with sport, with fitness, with anything. Uh, but that, that are the only pluses. The minuses um, are, you know, aging of breast is much faster if it's placed under the skin because the, the implant is pulling the skin down um, and uh, it stretches the skin, it makes the skin thinner and, uh, and, and the implant can be visible through the skin. Uh, if you know uh, uh, the implant once inside the body is not smooth, it's not like this. It, it wrinkles a little bit, so it gets like maybe something like this. So these are the wrinkles that you can feel through the skin, and this is called called wrinkling. If there is wrinkling in the in the in the decolletage area, uh, it can be really 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 ugly, and um, I mean something to correct because it, it, in the cleavage you know when you're wearing a dress or 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 a bra whatever it if there is some wrinkles wrinkles under the skin it looks really unnatural putting the the implant under the muscle that prevents the wrinkling so it's much less obvious there are implants uh, wrinkling is the, the the probability of wrinkling is much much smaller not impossible but much smaller and uh, then the other pluses would be the aging of breast is, is, is slower because the implant and the weight of implant does not stretch the skin. It, not, it does not uh, make the, the strain on the skin because the, the muscle which, uh, which holds the implant um, is much stronger tissue and uh, holds the implant much, much, much better and safer in long term than the skin. Um, the, some surgeons prefer to do uh, the implant subglandulary or sub, sub uh, above the muscle in girls who are very um, active in sports 
because there is this uh, uh, myth that uh, the, 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 the implants placed under the muscle could um, have make problems with, with uh, fitness, uh, bodybuilding and stuff like that. My experience is the opposite. I do a lot of fitness girls, a lot of uh, also um, girls that do, that do competition and placing under the muscle is not a problem. It works really well and they have zero problems also during workout. And I have yet to see a girl with problems because of um, implants placed under the muscle and doing workout. So in my, in my view, my experience, the most common combination is like this. Round implants of different sizes, of course, according to the chest. Incision under the, uh, the breast, so in inframammary fold incision. Placing the implant under the muscle and closing the, the wound. I mean, it's a, it's a 25 minute procedure and it works really well long term. I'm quite a, well, lazy person in, in a way. I want to, when I get home, I want to be calm. When I go to bed, I want to sleep well. I don't want to think about, you know, the comp potential complication that can come. I, I really like, you know, the results to be stable, long-term and with minimal complications. And in my way, that's, I, that's the way I, do, I achieve it, you know, by using round implants, by using inframammary incisions, don't, I mean, without doing any complicated procedure, because I, when I lecture, I sometimes say that complicated procedures have complicated results. Um, that's true anyway. I mean, keep it simple, you know, and keep it safe. So um, that were the nine factors, or maybe it was it was eight of them, that um, that are important uh, to when planning uh, breast augmentation.